And this one's so we can see a third map. Yeah, they put up solid numbers yesterday versus CLG, eliminating them <clears> then. <throat> and now they're going to be looking to do the same versus Optic. Of course, starting off on the CT side will be NRG. They're going to be coming into this one with the Diffuse Kit. Double flash on Gob. We have that early presence from Catwalk for the CT side, while Optic very strongly taking control of Long A. Tabson going to be rotating back with only a smidgen of health left over, looking for that information as this pistol round plays out quite slowly. Yeah, Optics right now is just trying to get some information. Like they're spread across the map. They're just trying to find out what kind of setup energy is pulling off right now, and then go big, basically mid mid game call this. And right now, energy is not giving them much information. Like they've been spotted, but energy is rotating around and keeping keeping them on their edge. Ooh, Stanislaw gonna get himself a little dink here. Legia finding himself back behind the cover. Now the Terra is starting to push forward as they know he's in tag. Of course, two more players already tagged for the CT side, and now they're out of the equation. Gob B left standing, one versus five. This is just way too much to ask for him as that B site's crumbled, the bomb's gone down, and it will be Optic to pick up the pistol. Yeah, same CLG, boys. It's gonna be a little bit harder than this, but honestly, when it comes down to it, it's... Again, they were just doing info gathering and spotting it, but each time they were doing that, they were getting like 80 damage off on several different players. So it just, they chipped them down, and no matter where they went, it was just like, it was overwhelming because there was no health, right? So the guy who was stuck in back B was just like, he was literally alone because one guy pushed up middle and got picked off. Just a lot of damage straight out of the gates, all then culminates into that, that final push, right? So Optic pick it up, and they immediately actually go into the uh, the five rifle buys. So they're not looking to find that farm off the money just as of yet. Meanwhile, NRG going to be coming into this one with no Kevlar other than Fugly, pistols across the board, and a single frag grenade looking to soften up any sort of an offense. CT is spreading themselves thinly across the map, just looking to see and make contact with Optic as they too crawl forward. Yeah, you don't really see this very often with Optic when there's a second round, they actually have all rifles because they're one of those teams that actually like to go with like three, potentially even four SMGs. But a map like Dust2 where you want to use your range and distance to basically pick people off, I guess they feel like this is the more safer route. And right now it's showing off, but, you know, if they can win these rounds and hold on the AKs not losing any economy, then it's going to be a really good call. Yeah, that's the big thing, right? Generally with MAC-10s, SMGs, you can f afford to lose a player or two in those second rounds. So it's nice to see that all five players are left standing for Optic. Great investment, pans out superbly, leaving them, of course, in an even better spot to take the next one, as it will be NRG with the full save. We've got the P250 single flash. Again, just getting through these farm rounds. Optic Gaming still moving forward. They've seen very little resistance. Yeah, no, it's only been two rounds. Like, we need a little more time on that. But, like, you know, it's one of those things, like, on second rounds, like, teams like SK, they buy the scouts. And it's a little intimidating, especially if you only have umps, like, long distance. So the AK and Galil buy was, yeah. made a lot of sense. And, I mean, also as well, right, we do have them uh, buying in quite lightly of the second, not going into any SMGs, even not players having Kevlar. So the big first buy from the CT should be uh, cushioned with quite a bit of utility. That'll be nice for them heading forward as they just look to get, you know, shred to pieces in this one. But they do find the frag to mix well, and NAF also down. So this is nice, considering that they have bought in less than they did in the previous round. However, Rush now, Stanislaw as well, going to start overwhelming this long A cross. They do still have as well Terret coming in from mid late. Both CTs currently stuck in that CT spawn. They clearly they're just investing just enough so they can have full utility for the first gun round, or at least like, you know, not maybe not full, but like really good utility because a lot of teams, again, like they just don't, they buy heavy second round and potentially even upgrade the pistol in the third round. And when it comes to the first gun round, they have maybe like a smoke or a flash and not enough utility. And a map like Dust 2, you want to be able to slow them down, push them back, and delay them as long as you can before the actual executes come. Now, in this situation, actually, those two AKs that are dropped off Mixwell and Naflar, Nafli aren't re-picked up. So Stanislaw and Rush are going to be sitting on the Galils. They never actually got the chance to retrieve them. Maybe a bit of a missed opportunity there as Mixwell still sits on the pistol. Maybe they just love it. Yeah, maybe and they do. And Legia with the op. That is something you do not see often. No, but we that do. That is puzzling, but I'm interested. We also have it on Peter as well. So the double op setup coming in from uh, NRG straight into their first gun round. There is no op on the opposing side. Optic with five rifles instead and a lot of mid presence already. Yeah, it looks like they're just doing a fast default to take control of catwalk, right? Because once you do that, you can basically play off catwalk and just decide whatever kind of shot you want to do, right? It's one of those things where a lot of teams and then they take it nice and slow and leave like maybe 40 seconds left for the decision. But when you take it fast, you got all the time in the world to basically play around, find out how they're like if they're doing a two-one-two setup, something like that. Once you get the information, you can make a play off of it. Of course, in this moment, if Optic were to push forward, they would meet heavy resistance. Peter sitting on the car with that AWP. It's a very strong position when you can use that corner. You pick off the first man in the front of it, just move to your left, and then still have multiple angles. If they do fall into CT spawn, of course, then they can close that distance using the cover of the wall. But with Tabson in that position, it's countering it. He will receive, however, that dropping terrorist, and it's three frags across the board for Optic. That CT defense obliterated in a matter of seconds. 
That's not exactly the start you want on the, on the gun round where basically they don't even take m much damage and it's just, you know, take catwalk, have one guy go, to, go down, drop into spawn, go up middle, split B, and then have the guys entering B. Every one of them got the kill that they needed in the entry. And that's very unfortunate. Because, oh, Lord. Style points. Terra going to take a run the, boost and it pays off. Finds the headshot. What is this? Wild stuff as Fugly at least takes one. A silver lining here for NRG as Fugly is being overwhelmed and killed accordingly. Optic Gaming up 4-0. No response in that first gun round. Yeah, it looks like Turok the Dinosaur Hunter was working on his jump so because that was pretty far. That was really good. And it's, oh, it's, oh, it's just, when you do stuff like that in these kind of matches early on, even if it's like 4-0, it's just like, I wouldn't say it's like trolling them, but it's just like, it gets in your head a little bit. You're just like, really? It's confidence. That's what, that's what we're going to do? Yeah, yeah. So it's absolutely. Like the Green Wall, they, they, love, they love to say Green Wall. They're a very momentum-based team. Although, I have to say, I do remember a round yesterday that involved NRG and a few knives, if you remember that one. I do remember so that. any BM that's in this server, I would say, may be warranted. We do have Optic, of course, still sitting in the five versus three as they deal with the uh, light pistols of NRG already two players down so that CZ double P250 but again this is just a round for Optic to have fun with. Yeah you know Optic's doing a really good job in these save rounds and like these like maybe upgraded pistol rounds of actually not losing men. I think in the what two or three rounds they've actually had they've I think they've lost one or two max so they're doing a really good job in the economy because when you see this uh, round we start you're gonna see that like the money they're just loaded so it's gonna be one of those things where like energy needs to win a round and then they gotta consistently win another round and win another round basically to try to get somewhat close to break the economy but it's gonna be really tough for them. We do still have Peter, last man standing. 46 HP here as he taps away towards that very tagged opper, but he's denied the frag as we do have the clean sweep from Optic. 5-0 at the gates. I mean, we saw that very successful uh, T side from NRG yesterday versus CLG on Dust 2, and now it's them who's feeling the brunt of that terrorist aggression. We do have a nice B spawn here for Optic. I'd be shocked if they don't actually have that early presence towards the tons. Of course, double op setup on both sides, though, could actually slow down this round for Optic as well. Yeah, like, this is really puzzling. I'm not not used to seeing Legia be opping in B because when he had that match against CLG, he was mainly rifling and he was just tearing them apart. So it's it seems like we're not like a Brazilian match where it's just like they have two often each team, potentially even three, because they're the ones that you see that more often with. So it's puzzling to see, but you know they got a head start off here. But like it's it involves a lot of economy to be spending two offs yeah. on, especially in the very first gun round when you're not quite sure how Optus to be playing unless like they had a really good read when they're doing the anti shredding. Yeah, now Mixwell's already taken out. He's the first casualty of the round for Optic. However, they do tag down both Legia and Gob B to 19 HP before he drops out of the equation. So there are very softened defensive players waiting to receive this push. However, with Peter finding himself another op frag, this is exactly what they needed. Two men up already. We do have Optic starting to split out from long. Taking the player out of the pit allows for them to some have positioning, but it's rushed to trade the frag back. An additional one from Naf, two versus two, and it's the men who are lit who remain. Yeah, you know, again, like, I, I start, I'm starting to think that basically their plan is to put in Legia in the back of B so they can actually have four guys towards over to A, so maybe that's the read that they have. But even when you have a man, up a man and you have four guys towards A and Optic take that take that side of the map, basically only losing two, uh, what, two, three guys compared to the two, like, I don't know, it's just one of those things where, I don't know, like, Energy's plan right now just seems a little puzzling to me, but they had four guys over there every day, they still lost the sight. And, well, they could retake it right now, but they are lit up. Yeah, that's big, right? Obviously difficult to retake with that AWP. The fact that they have or had two of them was going to make it harder. However, Rush is also tagged. So all three players here, very slim difference between life and death. And Rush slightly tagged up with that flashbang. Finds the frag to Legia over the shoulder of Gob, who's slowly starting to close the distance, trying to find the there angle, you. and he will. Through the edge of the cinders, he does find it. That's going to be time to defuse as well. Now we have energy on the board, six rounds deep. Yeah, this is a really tough spot to be in, though, because it is your first round, but you only had one one man survive, so this is going to be a pretty rough buy with them, like maybe fantasy, some some nades, but like this is the kind of round where you need to win clean, because if you lose this, you're obviously going to be broken, you're going to be struggling, it's going to be a really lopsided half at that point. So this is the kind of stuff where maybe I want to see something like potentially like an aggressive push, something maybe a little more, uh, you know, a little cheeky, something like that, because yeah. if you're going to play your standard setup right now with this, these kind of weapons, it's just not going to pan out. Now, unfortunately for energy as well, losing four players in that round leaves it, of course, to the difficult rebuy. We do see that AK on Fugly. However, double Fomus, Scout, there are limitations. They do still have two defuse kits, so if need be, if the retake comes through, they'll still be in a decent position. However, Optic not opting to buy back into Ops. Instead, just going to have that five AK buy down and some presence towards the mid door to get this round started. Yeah, this is doing a 2-1-2 uh, standard setup 
up, but it looks like they're getting ready to set up a mid beast slip potentially, which if they actually do go with, that's going to be really hard for, uh, for um, energy to hold because they do have a scout in the back of B, which is not a really good sp uh, position to be in with a scout. And the smoke grenade on CT is not perfect. Tabson's got himself over the top of the boxes, peering on in towards the doorway. Got B from the support of B site, looking to set up a crossfire here. So there are counter terrorists ready to receive this split. We do see NRG currently reading the situation as Fugly pushes out towards Long A. It's only going to confirm their speculation. Mixwell going to be putting down the smoke to the left side, and now things get cheeky as they're starting to walk in through CT spawn. Rush finds the frag. That's actually over towards Long. So there is still all of this presence jumbled up so damn close as Gob finds the frag. It's Stan to bring it back. Three versus four to the favor of the offense extending forward as they find another frag and add in a third. Legia is all that's left. You know what, that was actually a really sexy round. They did like a, a style of play where they actually left a lot of options open. Yeah. They had the bomb down like in the, towards like the lower B tunnel, so it's just safe, hidden from view. They had three guys work out middle really slow just to see what kind of picks they can get. One guy holding the upper B, potentially maybe pulling a guy over for the rotation. And also I think it was maybe I can't remember who it was outside long, but like they left options open for them to fall back to, if in case the going out middle yeah. didn't pan out. So like that's just really good, really good calling. I mean, it's really good calling in the sense that I wasn't actually really convinced as to what's going on, and I can see where everyone is. So I can only imagine on the side of NRG how confusing that could have been. Yeah. At first, you see the mid to B smoke, but then also they smoke the left side. Men are coming through smokes, but walking at the same time. It's just very confusion, uh, a very confusing execution, and yet it does pay out. So optic now up to six. This resets NRG accordingly. Already. They lose two players in this round. This is already turning into a bit of a steamroll. Yeah, was, honestly, there's not really much to say about this right now because they are just going on a steamroll right now. And is basically, Energy's not getting anything out of this. The one round they won was really close. It also came down to the one on one. And even getting to that point was very fortunate because they had two guys very low HP against two full HP guys. It was just. I don't know. I think they need to be calling a timeout about now and just basically work out what the what's actually happening because it doesn't seem like they know what's happening. Unfortunately for them as well, they come back into this round with a haphazard purchase. Three sets of Kevlar, three frag grenades to boot, and a couple upgraded sidearms to maybe deal additional damage. However, early aggression towards Long A will find Stanislaw rearing backwards towards the middle. Mixwell finding the opening frag as he executes out into the B site. Stanislaw adding one to the collection as Mixwell looks to do the same, takes down two. Gob answers back, but very quickly quelled, leaving only Fugly in a 1v4. Yeah, you can just tell they're just feeling it right now. Like, they're, they're starting to spread across the whole map and just basically do individual decisions and basically play off each other. Kind of like, it looks like a style of kind of like Fnatic used to play when they were like the top team in the world. It's just like, they spread out, they just make their own decisions and then basically call off of each other. So like, basically that's how they make their strats. That's what it seems like they're kind of going with right now. Because it doesn't seem like they have like a set, like, okay, this is what we're doing right now. It's right now they're just feeling so good that yeah. it seems more free flowing. It's before NRG are going to be able to actually take this game uh, or, or be able to play versus a serious optic. They need to stop them from running all over them. Because until optic have to actually sit back and think about the decisions they're making, as opposed to just trying to open up space and find big frags, well, NRG are just going to be getting run over, right? We saw obviously, um, I would say, optic versus G2 on Nuke earlier, where uh, um, excuse me, where, where, where G2 were able to get in their faces and, and keep them from, from finding any kind of success, whereas NRG in the previous day were just getting bodied by that. So again, they need to find a way to slow down Optic, make them play to NRG's strengths, and allow for them to maybe start playing the structured Counter-Strike NRG are a little more known for. Yeah, just, that's the thing, though, is Optic style basically is... It conflicts so much with the way energy plays. Energy is trying to be more methodical, like you know, plan things out a little bit slower. Yes. Optics more like up in your face, aggressive. Like um, we're gonna use, our, we're gonna outskill you. And doing that kind of stuff against a team like Energy is really hard because they're so outskilled in the matchup. Yeah, I mean Mixwell even he wins the gun duel despite being taken down to 26 before firing back. Rush on 45 as well. It's Tabson to find at least one frag for NRG, but still the defense at the man disadvantage. They do still have some positioning sped across the map, but there is an emphasis as well towards Cap walk as we do find both Peter and Gobby in this position boosting on up I believe to look in towards lower tunnels yeah like they're thinking about it yeah they, yeah, they don't really know right now what quite to do but Optic is doing a very good job with they're actually like they've done on their gun rounds there's been 
an array of strats. They've been on catwalk. They've been taking long. They've been taking B. They've done mid to B kind of stuff. Like they literally have been in all parts of the map. That energy does not have a good read on this because there's not been one consistent factor in each round that's been played. So when you do stuff like that and you're successful as a CT, it's just terrifying because you don't know what's going to come next. Yeah. How do you respond to what you don't even understand, right? It's difficult for them, so this is uh, obviously explaining this 8-1 so far. Leggy are going to be sitting with himself behind the tri-stack, spraying wildly, mm -hmm. allows for Tarek to find a team kill. Thank you, Tarek. Thank you. Turn yes, off. sir. Gob B, however, from the flank, drops the bomb carrier, looking for number two. He is denied, but the trade frag coming through from the back of the site leaves Naf all on his lonesome. Now, let's see. He's got a Molotov. He's got this AWP. No utility on the side of the defense and the bomb in their control. However, with Leggy in the back of the site, he needs to stay disjointed and away from Peter. If Naf can find the 1v1, then maybe he wins this. Now Leggy whiffs the shot. No. Naf turning back, trying to find the kill as he hides behind the boxes. Down he goes. And Peter now in the one versus one. There's pl there's time to play in this situation. There we go. I was more mainly saying no, cut off at the end of the round, but just the fact that, again, yeah. that's, you know, you won the round, but again, only one survived. So again, your economy right now is crippled. You only have pharmacies and a little bit of nades potentially. And again, if you lose this round on such a low buy that you're going to have, is it again going to re-break you? And it's just going to be one of those hazards. It's going to be potentially 13-2. Look at this individual performance so far from Optic. We've got 15 and 5 on Mixwell, 12 and 2 for Rush. When you have individual players like this just stepping up to this pedigree, it's so difficult to slow them down. Now, Gobby's going to change things up with some aggression in towards tunnels, but it's Tabson getting aggressive himself to find the opening too. Meanwhile, Tarek finding uh, some space on towards the B site. At least this is a, a silver lining for Optic as they could head this direction. Rush going to be actually uh, facilitating that as Tarek crouches across the cross excellently. Done. Cross the cross. Yeah. I, I ran like out that. of words. I like that. You know, you've had a lot of good sayings in this tournament so far, but cross the cross might take the cake. It's like saying you want you have to move around the round. Yeah, it's true. That's a good example. Three V two sitting at the B site. Bomb gonna be going down, both Peter and Fugly sitting on the opposing side of mid. Now of course B site very difficult to retake, made even more difficult when you're lacking utility. There is the incendiary underneath the window. That forces Rush's hand as he does reposition and allows for Peter to find the headshot, but it's responded to as Naf with an op of his own finds the refrag. Fugly, one V two, moving forward, he is denied, and it will be Optic Gaming finding another round. Yeah, man, look at those two fans getting loud. Getting wild Actually, I'm, here. I'm, I'm talking about like hundreds of fans. Don't pan out, camera. Honestly, like that round, if you if people actually notice, Towson got opened the round with a 5 one, like made it a 5 one, 3 but because when he did that, for some reason, there was actually no one in B. Tark Turok just crawled into B, did not get spot, spotted. And with that, he had control of B with no one there when there was a guy in the lower B tunnel, there's one opping middle, and the other three were towards A, and then he snuck in and then well, on an open site and just said, teammates, hey, come over here, it's wide open. And it's unfortunate because, you know, they're rebroken and it's just going to be one lopsided half. Tarek down to two points of health, but Peter's taken down for it, so... Excellently done as Legia is going to be headlining behind the dumpster, finds himself the Huandi. Looking to deal another, but Tarek finds the frag despite being on low health. It will be Tabson and Fugly left standing. Of course, considering they came into this round with only upgraded sidearms, a couple bits of Kevlar, and a few bits of utility, really they weren't looking too good. But they do find Mixwell as well. Now you've got me doing it. That and two players tagged in the situation. Well well. It's just it's just rough right now for uh, NRG as they came so close to actually maybe slowing down this round. But instead, it's just they the survive. Matt Fly is just flying around. Rushing is just rushing. I see what you're doing here. You know what I'm saying, right? The law. I don't know. What's the, dread, the judge dread saying? I am the law. Stannis law. I'm too young. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of things right now. This is just, this is just rough. It's like it's kind of hard to make it entertaining when it's just a slaughter. <laughs> well, I mean, we can still talk about obviously Fugly being alive, but that was only for a moment, so down he drops. Um, in this situation, I mean, again, right, we've touched on it. The fact that Optic are just playing to their strengths, they're just overwhelming the defense of NRG. Uh, throughout, the throughout the tournament so far here at Northern Arena, presented by Bell, um, Good one. we have obviously been seeing NRG with uh, a bit of maybe lackluster firepower, right? We were talking about how Tabson is kind of the guy to go to. We did see Gobby have a big performance yesterday while he did go absent, and Legia had that kind of that, that out of the blue performance. So maybe this is the issue for NRG right now, not finding themselves on the top of the aim duels, but Nap up close and personal denied before Tarek trades it back with a 2K of his own. The B site once again fumbling as they will be able to find themselves the bomb plant, and one can assume the round.
Yeah, like honestly, Optics is having to wear with energy like a rookie in prison. It's just, it's getting rough for them right now. And honestly, like they need to try to establish one more round, and if, if that's what you can take from this, because there's not much you can do. Like, you gotta have to go on a like a just a tear on the T side, and like against a team like Optic, who's gonna be up in your face, aggressive, pushing the issue, it's gonna be really hard for them to pull off. And you know what? I, they they insta picked this map, and. You know, they obviously smashed CLG on it before, and I think online the last three months they're what seven and two on it. Like it's a map they really do favor, but they're not playing the kind of same style that they were against CLG early in the tournament. Like, I don't remember seeing Legia be op like opping and and aggressively two opts door. speak in mid together, and not one. All right, this is just I don't know. I mean, this, at this point, it's Optic just completely overwhelming the side of energy. Maybe they've already lost it at this point. It is the eleven two, but Fugly gonna chime back at least with one. And Mixwell's tagged here, so they are gonna be able to at least maybe bring this back if they get themselves a stroke of luck, some the tilt skill, is real. and success. But. We've got Tabson up close on the boxes. Bomb's still sitting outside of Long. So the T side, they're not even playing tactically here. They're just looking for frags and overwhelming the defense. This is very... Yeah, they're playing a style where it's like, oh. you know, it's... Again, it's free-flowing, right? But the, the big part of that, if you want to be successful, it's when you get the information from where you get picks or where your teammates get picked, you know that certain areas of the map are going to be weaker. So they got the two kills middle, and then another, another one showed middle. So when you see that, you know, chances are there's only one guy going to be at long or catwalk, potentially. So they decided, you know what, we're just going to walk out long, and they got up in A while the other ones weren't even, like, basically trying to hold it. So they just use the information at hand to basically decide where they want to go, not based off of, like, a, sh a strat called before the round started. Fugly just, I suppose, trying to keep this AWP in hand. That bomb is near the cross, but still. I mean, they tried to throw it over, and it didn't even make it. They're worried, of course, that that AWP is watching for the cross. But again, Fugly's all the way back in b site, so he's looking to keep himself alive as the bomb goes down. This will more than likely be Optic heading in towards number 12. And I mean, this is getting so dangerously close that the second, the second pistol round could seal the deal here for Optic if they continue forward with uh, such a lopsided affair. Yeah, this is getting pretty Fugly. <laughs> How about that one? I'm a <laughs> oh, no, all right, you get me that. Honestly, there's no one else I can do it for now, basically. Just nice, nice shot, though. I'm, I'm out of ammo. Mixwell's out. Of course, we're just looking to overwhelm them, the right? The chase is on, right? They've been just disrespecting the side of energy this entire map, so why stop now on round 14 with the bomb down? Terrorists yeah. pushing forward. They should be able to take this away from him. Would you want to see some sort of revenge where they try to knife energy, the energy players? No. You don't want to see a little bit of revenge? No, I would rather Optic be uh, be better than that. Be classy? Stay classy? I mean, I think it says something that I believe... If I'm Now, I could very well be mistaken here, right? But we think of, obviously, that uh, that little that little show NRG put on for us last night. They put it on, obviously, because they're just completely dominating CLG. But let's remember, that was their first best of three win on LAN ever with these five players. Ever? I, if I'm not mistaken. They've won maps, but never series. So for them to think that they have the right to do something like that... I disagree, and maybe now they're being punished accordingly. Need a little taste of their own medicine? Yeah. Karma's a what? All right, come on, Gob. Make some. There we go. Nope. Oh, all right, there we go. Nice try. Almost there. I don't know what to say. This is... It's just they're getting torn apart. Again, as of what Moses would say, this is just sick. Just say, I mean, it's 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 disrespect, but there's Ooh, no reason hello. to do it. Tabson with the one tap, Ooh. and a second as well. Are you kidding? Yeah, Frag well, grenade. Going? That's not going to find anything, of course, but uh, it will allow for Stanislaw Law to use his own smoke grenade and find safety as the bomb is planted. This will be 13-2 unless Tabson, by some stroke of luck and miracle, comes up with the clutch. I mean, he's got the op, so actually, let's not take this away. He's still full HP as well. He doesn't have himself a kit, and now he's tagged. Going to be overwhelmed, and down he goes. So, yeah, I lied. Yep. He didn't have a chance. He's actually really known to have a really good deagle. Sees that apparently, too. Yeah, apparently. Just a pistol god, right? Ah, thanks, for, thanks for the off of the Timbits. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> so there we have it. An incredibly lopsided affair. I'm we have that... Uh, I mean, just... You know what? Let's, let's just go ahead and throw this into the commercial break. I think we all need a breather after watching that. Don't go too far.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. On your screen, of course, the statistics from the first half of Optic Gaming versus NRG Esports. Now, before the action continues, I would like to warn our viewers, any small children should turn away as this has been an R-rated experience. 13-2, Garrett. Eyes. My God. My God is right. You know, this is like, is like one of his maps that everyone knows that like, he's really good on. And right now, he's 2-15, and 15, which is... I'm not, like, I don't know why, like, I, I love the guy, but what, what's the deal with the op? I'm not sure, maybe that's something that's been working in the scrims, but like, I don't know. It's just, it's this whole style that they're playing right now is a little puzzling and I'm not used to how they're doing it, but the, the way, like, it's one of those things where the economy was in so much control for OpTic that they only had, like, when you think about the rounds, it was 13-2. How many actual gun rounds were there? There was only a couple, it was just the ones that, like, they just got rebroke twice. Yeah, That's all it takes. It's the two resets in round six and round ten that really sealed the deal here. I mean, that momentum is just too much to deal with, especially when you couple it with the aggression and style that Optic was throwing their way. Yeah, you never actually saw a full buy with full utility from from NRG. They had they bought twice on their first two gun rounds, double op with like one of them was no armor, one of them was uh, body armor and maybe like a flash. Just so limited on utility, and it just didn't pan out for them. And I mean, Optic's obviously one of those teams that you look for maybe, you know, they have an array of players who can step up in any one map. It's the fact that four of them right now are hitting their grooves in those high or mid-teens with the frags. Everybody just overwhelming NRG. But they will have this pistol to at least try and bring it back to a respectable scoreline. I mean, T-side, they've got this one flashbang on Legia. Optic Gaming coming in heavy with the Kevlar, looking to take those gun duels. Tabson to lead the charge up from Catwalk, but already we have the rotation from the CTs. Four players in this immediate area. Tabson, again, leading the charge. Rush waiting to receive, but it's Tarek with the headshot first and foremost. There comes Rush with one of his own and a second from FNAF, actually. So, excuse me, that looked like Rush as Fugly now synchronizes off of the long push. Two versus three, but how do they get across with no smoke? Yeah, honestly, what I want to say is like it's sometimes like logical CS and just smart like stress on stuff just take a backseat to just pure skill because they had an idea what they want to do, but then honestly, it's kind of hard to execute a strat when as soon as you're able to be you've spotted, you just get your head just taken right off, right? So it's it's one of the things like I wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt because again, they play CLG on their t um, when they were T and that's when they ran them over. So this is the side that maybe they favor more than the CT side, but we're not going to be able to have a chance at this pace to see what they have. And especially with the bomb down to spawn, there's no chance they're going to, oh, I take all that back now. Yeah, I mean, Peter gets uh, <laughs> himself a nice headshot to stand, takes himself a second, looking for number three here, and oh, you he know will. There you go. So how do they win the pistol round? How do they bring it back? What we is need, Peter saying again? We need Peter to step up with a 4K. What is Peter saying again? I have I no know, clue. The chat, the chat definitely knows. I don't know, but he's going to, it's one of those, what's it? Heart and soul. Heart and soul. Can you think they can bring this back? I mean, let's be realistic. Um, it would be possible. Obviously, it's the T side of Dust 2, right? But I think Optic Gaming, once they get themselves into the groove, once they start playing that no-respect CS again, because I'm sure we'll see it on the CT side, this is a map that you, you can be uh, afforded that, 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 uh, that presence, then maybe they do just bring it. But now they find the opening frag, so Stan, he's going to get this one started. Reloads as well to take now two. Fugly, however, with the response. Rush immediately in his face, dropped out as well. Woo! And Fugly makes it three. We hear the woo coming from the side of NRG as well, so they're excited. They've got that fire, the passion, and they're hey, ready to bring it back. Fugly taking a number four, looking for the ace now as Mixwell pushes on forward. Can he find it? Oh, I would like to see that because... They need some kind of momentum. There we go. Oh, look at this smile. Look at those guys. Having a great time losing, what, 13-4. Having hey, a great time. You know what? This is the kind of attitude you'll have to have if you're ever going to come yeah. back from something this That's big. So, so if, if we Play see it, loose. I'd rather see them cheer after that than just still be down in the dumps like we saw them in the halftime. Yeah, you see a lot of teams like that where they just, when they start losing like that, they just, like, not, yeah, don't it, say a word. It's like, at least they're having a little fun right now. They realize that they're in a hole. So they just got to play completely loose and just be like, all right, we potentially already lost this map, but let's just have some fun with it and see where we can go with this. And if they get the momentum like they have right now with, what, Peter's 4K, Fuggy's 5K, they can run with it. Tabson's going to spray Wiley with the ump, finds himself the opening frag, but he also sees this heavy presence. It's Fugly to peek on wide, takes down two. Nice spray transfers. He swaps to the sidearm and takes down three, but number four is sneaky. There it is. Not sneaky enough. Another round, big, uh, greatly played from Fugly. He takes four in that one. That's nine frags over the course of two rounds. So how are they going to make it happen? Apparently, the answer is Fugly and Peter. It's like Eco Cobra. Yes. <laughs> what movie is that from? I don't even know. Oh, you're you so have me young. Doing, you have you're me doing so this. Young. Look, the viewers, this guy doesn't even know what Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is. How I know what Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is. I just don't, don't know the handshake. Oh, he doesn't know the 
You're killing me. 90s are overrated. We've got the op on Peter, looking for the opening pit, Lemuel. but he tags Nafly to get it started. 16 HP on him here, and NRG going to start rotating in towards the mid-presence. Yeah, they're just working out the default right now, just basic stuff, right? They're not looking to overextend right now. They're just trying to get some information to play off it, just kind of like how Optic did in the first half, but they're doing it a lot slower. Because when you saw the first round, Optic just ran up Cat, wanted to get control of it fast. Eventually, that is the goal of them in this round, is to get Cat control. Well, Mixwell's looking to uh, close the distance off of the opportunity, but Fugly nearly plays it correctly. It's just Mixwell who finds the headshot. So five versus four to the favor of Optic. This is their first gun round. Hopefully for the side of NRG, they don't start losing this immediately once they're off, uh, their opponents have those rifles. It's Naf sitting himself in the uh, corner of CT spawn. Meanwhile, NRG closing it up, trying to find that bomb plant, I'm assuming, for the cat after plant positioning. They've got the smokes pluming on the site. Bomb now planting. Presence towards long as well. Keep your eyes on the radar. Leggy is still up and standing. Finds himself the headshot. That will now, of course, force the CTs back, but they are still going to try to find the retake. Yeah, if Lega stayed alive there, he could have been a real nuisance to basically hold him to a pinch because he really needed to... Oh, oh my god, this is going to happen. Tapsin. Then again, when Taps is alive, you know. 9 HP, Peter finds an op shot in the middle of all this. Now, of course, that flashbang from Rush is the only bit of, of, of utility, and he doesn't have a kit here, so if Tapsin plays this part smart... He's not going to peek. He's, he's going to take gonna the risk. It. He's too low. When does he go? Rush he's is on He's not going it? to. Who do we see? I think it was in G2. There it is. That sucks. I think G2 did that on cash when one of the players had no health. Oh, they still won, though. Uh, when one of the players had no health, he was in a main, and he couldn't peek, because if he peeked, he would have either got walled, or he would have died immediately. So it's one of those things, like, you're so low. Did he just wave at me? What? I think he waved at me. Oh, I have you no idea. I'm, I'm watching the screen. <laughs> Are you watching the screen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you know they won the round? I did. No <laughs> defused it. Done and dusted. Mixwell coming in with the AWP for the side of Optic. But other than that, it's pistols aplenty. And Tarek doesn't even have Kevlar here. So they won't have any defuse kits to try and play for the retake. It's really going to come down to whether or not Mixwell can find their, his team an opening. Meanwhile, NRG having this uh, heavy presence towards the tunnels, peering into the B site, trying to find themselves some way to sneak on through. We're finding ourselves in the exact same situation that the first half went, right? When they won the pistol, they won the first few rounds. Again, it's going to come to a situation where like, they're just going to have to keep some momentum going and then on the gun rounds when they're going to be low on utility to win those. And if they do lose a round, win this round right after to re-break them. So I think it's going to be like almost a mirror of the last half. It's just whether or not NRG can win those gun rounds when they do present themselves. Heavy presence from the CT side up on the top of Catwalk with Rush and Tarek on the other side of the door nearby to support. They uh, utilize that smoke grenade to create a bit of confusion. You can see Fugly rattling off some rounds, trying to just connect some damage. Meanwhile, the rest of NRG going to work their way out long A. And there is no defense here, so they should be able to find themselves at the very least towards the car. Yeah, they're getting like they're just doing info gathering. Just take, they're basically just looking to trade together because they do know it's like if they are going to buy, it's going to be a low buy. So they're not looking to get picked off one by one. They're just trying to save groups. So no matter the worst case scenario, they just go one for one and trade. Because well, unless they get opt by Mixwell long distance, but they're just sticking together and basically taking the less risky approach. Now that's going to be Mixwell still up and standing. Nav finds the Juan Deeg looking for number two, but it will be Mixwell with the op to save the day. And will it pan out? A single primary coming into this one. Three versus two as Legia retains the mid control. This does pull the attention of Mixwell away from the site. Allows Peter a bit of an opportunity to find some frags, and he does. Close range op connects, but Stan brings it back by one. Bomb dropped in the middle of the open, and he now has his hands on the AK. Legia with a Kalashnikov of his own, but he also has the smoke and the bomb as well. The time is ticking quickly, and Optic finds the frag. Okay, that's that's very unfortunate, but this is the kind of deal where they need to win this round and re-break them, because without, obviously without that, they're going to they're clearly lose. But, you know, when you have, you have a mix ball with the op, especially even on, like, like no-buy rounds and stuff like that, it's anything can happen. I'm not sure if you if you could tell there if they even threw a smoke for crossing. Nope. Because if they didn't throw those smokes, that's a mistake, because they're just allowing themselves to be able to shot, be shot from long distance. And obviously, Nap with the, the one dig, that's also going to help open it up. But I think Mixwell got two there before he got flanked. Yes, I believe so as well. So that op pans out, and it will be Optic winning because of it. It's unfortunate, of course, as NRG was starting to bring this, round, this map back. Suddenly, now it's the pistol with one op that does it to them. Awful position to find themselves in, however, and then it, of course, leads to this situation. Two upgraded pistols on Peter and Gob. Meanwhile, we've got the double AK and a scout. So there are limitations here, as Leggy is also playing glass cannon, not even with an op. It's an awful spot to find yourselves in as you are with your back against the ropes. Optic Gaming, one round away from securing overtime. Yeah, it's like there's not much you can do right now with two AKs, and they, 
the weapons that they have. It's going to be one of the things where you let the AKs lead and potentially pick or recycle them when you're trying to hit a site. So maybe doing a cap take, and then if anyone gets picked off on the cross, the scout, the pistols can either pick them up because there's not much they can do right now with the utility. So maybe it'll be like a fake to a mid B. I'm not quite sure, but Mixwell is alone in A. He doesn't have the support. Now he's going to be caught in the open unless they don't punish him. He comes up big, nearly finds the second frag. Tabson will overwhelm him. So it's a four versus four with the op now in the hands of Peter. That's who you want to pick this up. Again, CT is going to be bringing it back as Tarek takes one down off of mid. So last three players for NRG all congregated towards the site. You can see Fugly. He's hesitant as to whether or not he wants to fall back towards Catwalk. And the presence from Tarek could push him backwards as Peter finds the frag. Three versus three on the board. And with this gunfight's wild, it trades one to one yet again until Fugly comes out on on top, leaving all the pressure on the shoulders of Stan. We'll see if we can close one out, but honestly, that was a huge mistake from Mixwell. If anyone was watching that right now, it's, like, you, it's a 2-1-2 two -two setup. You know they're going to be low on guns. It's, it's an important round, and he's going to be caught out in the open when he could have played towards Game Helper, and actually, if he lost the position, he could have played a retake of the A site. He had no one to support him on that take. Yeah, I think also the problem is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there was nobody for uh, there was nobody there to support Mixwell from long A. That's right, yeah. That's yeah, right, yeah, so, so if he like falls this. onto a ramp or Game Helper, then he's exposed to the left. So I guess he tries to deal this damage before he's taken out of the equation. He nearly actually finds two, right? So that would have yeah. been, that was one of those either big or deflated plays. Yeah, and it just doesn't work. That's not on the long end guy. That's on the fact that he's playing so aggressive with no support from a guy playing like spawn or he has no support from the guy long as he has to watch that position. So he just got caught in the open playing way too aggressive when he should have been playing back and playing maybe a retake setup if he lost position. Speaking of losing positioning, it's down to just three players for Optic. Of course, they didn't have the strongest buy coming into this round. They do still have only two sidearms in the equation. Rush with the Soul M4 currently playing from car. Stan going to close the distance off of the flash. Finds one, grabs the AK, but down he goes as Legia also takes another. It's Tarek left standing in a 1v3. Now his positioning unknown and he's closing the distance. Hears that the bomb is going down. Nearly finds Tabson off the sidearm, but instead it will be NRG at the very least with another round. Are you starting to believe? I always believe. Kevin Garnett, anything is possible? Exactly. You have any idea what I'm talking about? Sure. <laughs> you don't seem like a basketball fan. You don't think? <laughs> <laughs> We're a few, a few shades lighter than the others. Believe it or not, <clears throat> I am an esports guy. You're an esports guy? Yeah. I'm overall sports fan. Pistols. Esports is a sport. It's true. Pistols on Optic, again, just going to be pretty much the vanilla buy down. They do still, of course, have the flashbang for Nap and a P250 on Mixwell. But this fast play in towards the B site really does kind of just go to show that NRG have the read here. They're not expecting much of a resistance, so they're willing to take the chance of closing the distance aggressively because they're sure that they can overwhelm anything that Optic throw their way. But Stan gets through the doorway, nearly stops the plant, and instead tabs and saves the day. Yeah, that's a smart play because it's one of the common anti-ecos that you can have as a terrorist where you have the opera spot the, the double door cross, and if he only sees one or two cross, potentially even slow, then you can just rush into B uncontested unless, like, obviously the guys with the pistols are one digging you, but it's a pretty safe pistol that can be aggressive if you have the one opping spawn, but if it's smoked across like that, you can't do something like that because it is too risky. Two frags back, NRG still dealing damage, Tarek down, he drops, so NRG dangerously close to the double digits, but remember, of course, Optic still one round away from securing overtime. So this could still be a 16-14 comeback for NRG. Don't count it out. Anything's possible. And we saw a tight game from them on the T side of Dust 2 yesterday. It so far, like it's looking good. Half. It definitely seems like the stronger half because the CT side, they showed us really nothing that we we could have talked positive about, to be yeah. honest with you. But their T-sides do look strong, and again, they have control of the economy, which is the big part of these maps, especially when we're trying to come back. It's just the only problem is they don't have the luxury of allowing them to lose a round and try to re-break them. If they do that, it's going to be a minimum, at minimum a tie. Unfortunately for NRG, all the success they've found, and they don't find it at the beginning of this round, it will, of course, be the 5v4 to the favor of Optic Gaming. Heavy presence on the mid doors as they boost on over from the boxes. They spot that presence. Tarek and Naf stuck between the fire and the flames. Need to reel backwards to safety, and they do. They're allowed to get out of that very sticky situation, and Fugly takes one off of A. This is now equalized back to the 4v4. Yeah, you know, that was really smart. They, as soon as they saw the guy on the boost, I think they even noticed that he was being boosted at that time. So once they did that, the guy on catwalk moved up a little bit faster and realized it was open, but they didn't really move upon that as fast as they could have. But, you know, they're just going back to their bread and butter, which was the cat takes, which hasn't failed them yet. But this is a little bit of a different take because they don't have the opt to support, so they're going to be playing aggressive with rifles. Mixwell takes down two. Tarek takes two of his own. Two plus two plus 
Just four, five, math, hard. Something like that. Round for Optic, number 15 on the board. So that's what I'm talking about. Like, like, again, worst case scenario, they obviously are going to try to tie it out. But again, they have the opportunity right now to break them. And they can still go on that run that Optic did to them in the, in the first half. Yeah. It's just the double up again. I mean, is it going to work, right? That, that double op setup is generally indicative of a slower pace to the round. The frag grenade does deal the cover for the cross. So Optic get by with taking zero damage, but it's the frag grenade at long A that at least drops NAF to 66. Three players over in this side of the map do allow them to take the forward positioning, and then we see NAF fly fall on back towards the A site to just bolster that defense. It's, it's, when you have a double op on T side, and if you're going to shoot the doors and actually give that position away, I think it's kind of telling as a CT to be like, all right, chances are they're going to be doing some kind of A hit because trying to get to B, if you could do a mid-B split with two ops or just hang up B, straight up B, it's, it is kind of rough. So they do plan on doing that. It's, I'm going to be very interested to see how they actually gain the site with two ops. Uh, Beast currently trying to make some presence made over towards the cap push. Meanwhile, the rest of his teammates just going to be pondering in towards the mid-doors. Tarek on the receiving end of things here from the boxes, gonna smoke off nearby, so now there's some confusion being made. Damage being dealt as he fires off wildly. It's gonna be taps it up close to drop on first. Gob bringing it back from the back of mid as Tarek finds another, aggressively peeking over the boxes, but his teammate's dead inside of the site, and Tarek finds himself to the other side of the smoke. Three versus three, very hectic, but somehow they have found the site. Both entrances smoked, and the CT's coming through for a potential retake unlimited utility. That was completely chaotic, and I think they're very fortunate they actually even got into that site there, but you know what, it paid off in the end is just Legia actually made a, a brazen move to actually go into B and just realize that his teammates were struggling and he had to make a move because a lot of times he would just, got to just hold back the B tunnel. Great Molotov for Mixwell allows for him to find Peter. Now we've got Legia on the cross, missing the shots as Mixwell finds the first. Of course, Gob B was actually tagged in that because Legia hit him with the op shot while flashbang. So an unfortunate series of team damage does kind of